Unitry recently made waves in the robotics industry by launching the R1, a humanoid robot priced at just $5,900, making it one of the most affordable options on the market. That is, besides the Hugging Face open source robot that costs $3,000. But how does this budget-friendly robot compare to Unitry's G1, which has been their flagship humanoid model so far, starting at $16,000? In this video, we'll break down the key differences between these two base model robots, covering their specs, performance, and real-world usability. We will first begin with the features of Unitree R1, then we will go to the features of Unitree G1 base model, and we will close it with the main differences between the two, and talk about what Unitree traded off to reduce the price to $5,900 from $16,000. Starting with the Unitree R1, this new robot comes in multiple iterations, but here we are only focusing on the base model that costs $5,900. First of all, this robot has to be manually operated by a remote, and it doesn't come with autonomy. It has a compact design, standing at 1210 millimeters tall, 357 millimeters wide, and 190 millimeters thick, which is approximately 47.6 by 14 by 7.5 inches. The R1 is significantly smaller than the G1 and similar in size to the Booster T1, which is known to play football using its own AI without human control. It weighs just 25 kilograms, which contributes to its portability and ease of handling. The total number of degrees of freedom in the R1 is 26. That includes six in each leg, five in each arm, two at the waist, and two for head movement. To reduce cost, the R1 comes with fixed, non-dexterous hands. The hand remains in a clenched fist position and does not move, though you can buy functional hands separately. To keep costs down, Unitree didn't equip the R1 with high-end sensors. It uses a binocular camera system with an ultra-wide field of view instead of LiDAR or depth cameras. The R1 also uses a combination of single and dual encoders for joint position feedback. Joints with single encoders must have been introduced to cut down costs. In terms of cooling, it uses a local air cooling system. And for electrical routing, it has both hollow and internal routing to pass cables cleanly through the center of input-output shafts. In terms of the brain of the robot, it has a basic 8-core CPU with an unspecified GPU, which can support some autonomy in the robot once launched maybe in the near future. It also has a 4-mic linear microphone array for voice interaction and dual 3-watt speakers for audio output. Connectivity is modern, offering Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.2, and like other Unitree models, it supports over-the-air updates and carries an 8-month warranty. Finally, since this is the base model, it does not allow secondary development unless you upgrade to the EDU version. The robot's joints deliver a maximum torque of 2 kilograms, and it uses crossed roller bearings with double-hook ball bearings. The joint motors are low inertia high-speed internal rotor, the same type used in the G1. For power, it relies on a lithium battery that gives it a runtime of about one hour under optimal conditions. Charging is done separately and Unitree provides a smart battery with a quick release mechanism, making battery swaps easy. Batteries are also available for purchase since the R1 doesn't charge while plugged into the robot. It would have been impressive if it had a self-replacing battery like the Walker S, but the R1 is not autonomous yet and can't do that. Now moving over to the Unitree G1 base model, it is priced at around $16,000 or about $27,300 after U.S. tariffs and was originally built for developers, researchers, and educators. It is also manually controlled with a remote control and doesn't come with autonomy. It measures 1,320 millimeters in height, 450 millimeters in width, and 200 millimeters in thickness, which makes it larger than the R1 in every dimension. In imperial units, that's roughly 52 inches tall, 17.7 inches wide, and 7.9 inches thick. The G1 is also heavier, weighing approximately 35 kilograms with the battery installed. It features 23 degrees of freedom, slightly fewer than the R1, but it makes up for that with higher quality components. For instance, the joint bearings are industrial grade crossed roller bearings, offering higher precision and load capacity than what you get in the R1. The G1 uses the same PMSM motor type as the R1, but its knee joints can generate up to 90 Newton meters of torque, which is significantly more powerful than the arm joints in the R1. The arms on the G1 can carry loads of up to 2 kilograms, which is about the same as R1. In regards to the hands, the G1 base model also doesn't come with dexterous hands, but it can wave one of its hands. The hands have fingers, but they are locked in a fixed position, and in case you need dexterous ones that can manipulate objects, then you need to spend a little more in order to get them. One of the most important upgrades in the G1 is the vision system, which includes both a depth camera and 3D LiDAR, making it vastly superior in spatial awareness and environment sensing compared to the R1's camera-only system. 
In terms of internal design, the G1 has full joint hollow electrical routing and uses dual joint encoders across the board. This dual encoder setup allows for real-time position correction and improved accuracy in joint control, which results in better precision, smoother movement, and lower error rates during operation. It also uses local air cooling to maintain motor temperatures during active use. For computing power, the G1 comes with a high-performance 8-core CPU, though like the R1 base model, it does not include an NVIDIA Jetson Orin unless upgraded. Battery life is one of the biggest differences. The G1 features a 9,000 mAh battery that offers a runtime of up to 2 hours, double what the R1 provides. This means the G1 is better suited for extended sessions, whether you're testing AI algorithms, performing demonstrations, or running movement simulations. The G1 also supports Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.2, making it just as capable in terms of connectivity and remote control range. It is not autonomous, and like the R1, it requires a controller or remote for operation. Over-the-air software updates are supported, and it comes with an 8-month warranty similar to the R1. When you compare the two robots side by side, the most obvious physical difference is the height. The Unitree R1 is significantly shorter and more compact compared to the G1. Interestingly, in Unitree's promotional videos, the R1 and G1 appear almost identical in size, giving the impression that they stand at the same height. But if you look closely at the actual Unitree G1 robots that have been shipped to consumers, they match the dimensions listed in the official spec sheets and are noticeably shorter than how they appear in the demos. This raises a valid point about the R1. Based on its listed size, it seems even smaller, similar in dimensions to Booster Robotics Humanoid, which shares a comparable frame. So, the R1 may not be as tall as it appears in Unitree's demo videos, unless those videos are filmed using a carefully chosen camera angle to exaggerate its height. Another key difference is the battery size and resulting runtime. The Unitree G1 is equipped with a 9000 mAh battery that gives it an estimated runtime of about 2 hours, which is quite respectable for a humanoid robot of its class. On the other hand, the R1 has a noticeably shorter runtime, only about 1 hour. This reduced endurance likely comes down to two factors, the compact size of the robot and the company's effort to minimize its weight. To achieve this, Unitree probably had to opt for a smaller battery, which has directly impacted how long the robot can operate on a single charge. Fortunately, Unitree has designed the R1 with a smart battery release system, making it easy to swap out batteries quickly. They also give customers the option to purchase extra batteries, which is a practical workaround to extend usage time during longer sessions. Another noticeable difference lies in the vision system, which, as we've seen even in the electric vehicle space, plays a huge role in both capability and cost. The Unitree R1 uses a humanoid binocular camera setup for visual input, whereas the G1 comes equipped with a more advanced depth camera combined with 3D LiDAR. Now, LiDAR has traditionally been seen as the gold standard for spatial awareness and navigation, offering high accuracy in depth sensing. But that changed when Tesla started challenging the industry norm, arguing that camera-based systems are more scalable and cost-effective. Effective. While Tesla's push sparked intense debate, it highlighted a critical point when it comes to cost. So for R1 to come without the expensive LiDAR and rely instead on a simpler binocular camera system has reduced the robot's price point. It's a smart move that could set a trend, encouraging other robotics companies to reconsider what's necessary versus what's simply driving up costs in humanoid robot development. The last major difference that contributes significantly to the price drop between the two robots is the type of joint encoders used. The Unitree G1 exclusively uses dual encoders, which are generally more accurate and offer better performance, especially in terms of joint positioning and feedback precision. In contrast, the Unitree R1 employs a mix of single and dual encoders. While Unitree hasn't specified exactly how many joints are used using single encoders versus dual ones, so we won't speculate to avoid misinformation. The fact that they are combining both types is a clear indicator of cost optimization. Single encoders are noticeably cheaper than dual encoders, and by strategically integrating them, Unitree has managed to lower production costs. This decision plays a big role in the reduced price tag of the R1, showing how even subtle hardware adjustments can have a large impact on affordability without necessarily compromising too much on core functionality.